Alrighty, here we have problem set uh, number 11, where we're going to start talking specifically about orbitals. In problem set 10, we talked about quantum numbers, and quantum numbers are used to describe orbitals, and now we're going to be using the language of quantum numbers in this problem set. So, the first problem says to draw diagrams showing the relative sizes, shapes, and orientations of the 1s, 2p, 3d orbitals of the hydrogen atom. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing to note is that this letter corresponds with um, the quantum number L, which tells us the number of planar nodes that exists that exist. So an S orbital has no planar nodes, a P orbital has one planar node, and a D orbital has two planar nodes. So I'm going to draw them a little bit neater. Um, here we go. So if we had the one S orbital, looks like that. And the other thing to know is that um, for L equals 0 for the s orbitals, and m sub L then equals 0, because it equals negative L up to positive L. And that tells me, because there's only one number here, there's only a single 1s orbital. Whereas with 2p, I'm going to have 1 two, three, this is going into the board. Okay, so that's because L equals one, so M sub L equals negative one, zero, one. We've got three different orientations. And lastly, 3D, um, D orbitals look like clovers, and so we've kind of got one, I'm not going to draw all of them because they all look pretty much the same, but you're going to have four that look like this, just kind of spun around, and then one that looks like um, this with kind of a donut around it. Now, a uh, common question is, you know, D is when L equals two, so I should have two planar nodes. And uh, here, it's pretty easy to see the two planar nodes. But here, it's not so easy with this donut. Well, another name for planar nodes is angular nodes, because they represent nodes that exist at an angle from an axis. So here, that angle is just like 90 degrees, or 0 degrees. Uh, but in this one, that angle is just something like this. And so you can imagine, if that was spun around, you'd end up with a node that looks like a cone going up and a node that looks like a cone going down and you can kind of see that in this orbital. So and we're going to have five total because m sub l equals negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. Um, the one thing I didn't really do very well here is uh, showing the shape, or sorry, showing the relative sizes. So you should know that the 2p orbital is bigger than the 1s and the 3d is bigger than the 2p because we go higher energy, further away from the nucleus, bigger um, orbitals. All right, what is a node? A node is a region of zero electron density. So really the electron cannot exist where a node exists. So if we're talking about like a standing wave, right, there's a node right there. There's no wave there, right? As these go up and then back down, and this goes down and back up as they flip up and down, there's no movement there. The wave literally doesn't exist there. Okay, it's the same thing with um, electrons. There are points like this right here. Electrons never exist right there. So that's a node. How many total nodes will any orbital, given orbital have? n minus 1 tells you the total nodes that an orbital has. So if I go up here, n equals 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, there are 0 nodes here. n equals 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, there's 1 node. n equals 3, 3 minus 1 is 2, there's 2 nodes. All right, this next question asks, asks, what is the difference between a planar node and a radial node? So, so far we've only been exposed to planar nodes. So a planar node is a flat plane 
through the nucleus with zero electron density. That's what we've seen. A radial node is a sphere around the nucleus where electron density equals zero. So uh, we'll see more of that as we move forward in this problem set. So I won't take the time to explain that now. How can you tell how many planar nodes and how many radial nodes an orbital will have? Well, we know that n minus 1 equals total nodes. And we talked up here about how L tells you the number of planar nodes, which is what gives an orbital its, its, its characteristic shape, an s orbital or a p orbital or a d orbital. Well, that means that if, if n minus 1 is bigger than L, then n minus 1 minus L would give us the rest of the nodes, the radial nodes. Again, we'll talk about how to find those. This takes us to E, and E asks, for n equals 3, how many total nodes will each orbital have? How many nodes are radial and how many are planar? All right, so n equals 3, which means L equals 0, 1, and 2. So let's talk about each of these. When L equals 0, that's an s orbital, which means it has 0 planar nodes. But if n equals 3, n minus 1 equals 2. So that means we need to have two total nodes. Well, if L is 0, 0 are planar, which means 2 must be radial. If L equals 1, 1 is planar, which means 1 must be radial. And if L equals 2, 2 are planar. That's a d orbital, and so there's 0 radial. All right, so now we can draw some of these finally. Draw diagrams of the following hydrogen atom orbitals indicated by the type and location of each nodes. All right, so 2s. How many total nodes? n minus 1 equals 1. So one total node. And it's s, which means L equals 0, which means 0 planar, which means we must have 1 radial, because 1 total and 0 planar. So that means we're going to have an s orbital. Okay, but we kind of got another s orbital around it. So with s orbitals, it's kind of hard to think about, but you can think about it this way. I've got my electron density, and then a node, and then my electron density around that. So we usually just draw that as two circles, and the node is kind of right on that line on the inside. Okay, which means if we had a 3s, n minus 1 equals 2, so two total nodes, L equals 0, so 0 planar, because it's an s orbital, which means you have 2 radial, which means we're going to have boom, boom, boom. Maybe as we draw this with p orbitals, it'll help make a little bit more sense. 3p, n minus 1 equals 2 total nodes. p tells me L equals 1, so 1 planar and therefore one radial. So I draw my p orbital. Now, one way to think about this is if I draw a big p orbital, there's a, I've already got my one planar, there's, kind of, there's gonna be a sphere here around the nucleus where electrons cannot exist, and so we end up cutting off the orbital right there. And the way that I draw that is like this. Okay. 
Maybe you're may maybe you can, maybe you can't see how we got from here to here. But if I look at this, I've got my one planar node, which is what makes it P looking, and one radial node. So that's our 3P. Now for D, oh, and I'm not too worried about the X, right? All that means is that this is the X axis, but I'm not worried about that. Okay, for D, N minus one equals three total nodes. D means L equals two, so two planar, which means I must have one radial. So I can draw my characteristic D orbital Okay, and it's got its two planar nodes, one, two, and similar to here, I want to add one radial node, which means I just need to add my kind of extra lobes out here. And so you can see now there's a sphere around the nucleus where no electrons exist. And hopefully that helps you out with number three. All right, number four, now we're gonna go the opposite way. They give us pictures and we want to figure out which orbitals are these. So the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna calculate total nodes. I'm gonna look at planar nodes um, and, and I'll be able to figure this out. So if I start with this guy, how many total nodes? Well, first off, how many planar nodes? Well, I can tell it's kind of a sphere shape. They've, got, they've cut it in half so that we can see it. But that means that because it's a sphere shape, that means there's zero planar nodes. I look in here and I, I want to figure out radial. Take this green. The way I figure out radial is I start in the middle of the photo, of the picture. And every time the color changes, that represents a radial node. right? Those spheres are radial nodes where the color change. So I start in the middle and I go out and I count the color changes. Well, I've got one right here from red to blue, blue to red, red to blue, blue to red. So that is four radial nodes, which means my total nodes is four, which means that's n minus one, so n equals five. So this is five, and the fact that the planar nodes is zero, that gives me my L, which means that's an S orbital, so this is a five S. All right, let's jump over here. How many planar nodes here? It's got that characteristic P shape because of a planar node right there. So that's one, which equals L, which gives me a P orbital. How many radial nodes? So we're gonna follow that same rule. Now you can see this kind of inner P right here Okay, is red on one side, blue on the other. That's because it's changing colors across that planar node. But I'm just gonna start in the middle and go straight outwards and count the color changes. So I start red, I go to blue, I go to red. Two color changes means two radial nodes. Which means my total is the one plus two gives me three, which is n minus one. So n equals four. This must be the four P orbital, P is right there. Okay, jumping over here. How many planar nodes? I see one, two, that's my L, which says this is a D orbital. Hopefully you can see it's kind of got the clover shape. How many radial? Well, if I zoom in, start in the middle, go directly outward, count the color changes. I start blue, I go to, yet to white, that's one color change. So that means I have one radial node, which means total equals three with n minus one, which means n equals four. So this is the four D. So again, planar nodes tells you your L, which gives you your shape, and radial nodes plus planar nodes gives you your total, which is equal to n minus one, so you get your n. 
Awesome. All right, what is meant when two or more orbitals are said to be degenerate? Uh, that means that they have the same energy. Which What orbitals are degenerate in a hydrogen atom? Uh, in a hydrogen atom, so if you, if a orbital, sorry, if an atom has one electron, so that's why it's asking about hydrogen, one electron systems are, um, orbitals with the same n are degenerate. Okay, that means in one electron systems, the 2s and the 2p orbitals are the same energy. The 3s, the 3p, the 3d orbitals, all of those three are the same energy. But in other atoms, When we have multiple electrons, orbitals with um, the same n and the same l are degenerate. What does that mean? Which means multiple electron systems, the uh, the 2s is lower energy than the two, the three different 2p orbitals, okay? But because these have the same n and l, these are degenerate. Where here, those are all degenerate. And I guess for consistency, all the 2ps. Why is there a difference? The biggest reason uh, to understand is that once you start throwing multiple electrons in there, you get this electron-electron -electron repulsion, which changes the energy level of the orbitals. All right, how can an electron get from one lobe of a p orbital to the other without going through the point of zero electron density between them? Uh, electrons are waves. Sometimes they act like particles, sometimes they act like waves. This is one situation where they act like a wave. Um, right? If I have like a wave like this, here are some nodes. Okay. You don't have a problem with the fact that the wave exists here, it exists here, and it exists here, but it does not exist here, and it does not exist here. That's fine because we understand wave behavior. Electrons can do the same thing. I've got this p orbital with a node right there, because the electron's a wave, it can exist here, it can exist here, but it doesn't exist there at the node. And that's just how it's going to be, because electrons behave like waves sometimes. That looks like it's it. So uh, there we have it. Um, that's uh, some additional information about orbitals.